Hey, hello there, fellow YouTubers. I came to sit outside. I don't come out here very much. Um, it's been that way for close to four years now. And, uh, I used to work and bust my ass and anything I could do. And when my mom passed away, which will be August 28th of this month, It'll be four years, and I struggled to keep my job because uh, all that was going on, but like what I could say is, so I get it confused, but I've, uh, I ended up quitting my newspaper delivery and I went to work for her boyfriend and and then when my mom died, I uh, had trouble keeping it because there was issues in the family. So, but this is the month. And her birthday just passed on the 6th of August. It's like the 5th, 6th because she was born at midnight. But So, I don't know. Um, you know, I've been... Uh, kind of feeling depressed but the reason for that mostly is because of my sleep um I haven't been able to get sleep in many many years I worked nights for uh 10 years or more and before that I, I worked um cleaning offices um real good job good money um but it you know led me to work till like six till three thirty in the morning and you know when you're on those kind of shifts it it gets tough after a while uh i've always been working at night or late uh so you know having a kid with autism has really changed my life for the past 22 years and i've not gotten enough sleep in a very, very long time, so anytime it starts happening and dig again to where you only getting like five hours, if that, and waking up with pain and numbing all in between, it, you're just not sleeping very well, so it's hard. <laughs> so anyway... He fell asleep right now, my son, in the middle of, you know, nowhere. And now, best bet would be not to let him sleep too long. <laughs> but, you know, what are you going to do sometimes when you need some time to yourself or time to think? Or, you know, because always around here, there's just like total constant action. That it's just, oh. Man, no time to think. That's why once in a while I'll grab a beer or two and stuff and just to be able to relax and think, you know. But I really wanted to go on to the thing about my mom when she died August 28th of 16. I really wanted to talk about what led to all this, you know. She was having really bad pain in her back and her hips and all this stuff and couple different boyfriends kind of she'd fight with a lot after her divorce with my dad I mean they they fought too constantly every damn day but you know never physical and then a couple other people she got involved with you know it got physical and believe me she handled herself but I think in the meantime you know it screwed up her back more and everything and plus two she just <sighs> took a lot of prednisone it took a lot of Um, anti-anxiety pills and Xanax and things like that. And her whole life she was always, you know, really nervous. And, and um, you know, I saw why, the, how things went at home. It, it was hard. So, 
Oops, a bug got on me and I... It was a weird one. So her anxiety, you know, was really hard. So after years later, you know, of being on Xanax all the time and they tried her on Prozac and she was on Prozac for a long time and she went through a lot of counseling and but after she ended up divorcing my dad it she seemed like she was a lot happier and um but then she just fell into uh, the type of personalities and boyfriends that um were good for her and that brought her anxiety on even more it did it, it tore her up you know so she was annex 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 and um Prozac, 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 and uh, then it ends up sleeping pills, like, well, stuff to help you sleep, like, um, Trazodone and things like that. I can't remember them all. The muscle relaxers, um, so the pills just kept getting higher. And she was on a lot of pills, and she couldn't remember when she took them or not. Um, she quit. She never used to drink her whole life, and then she started, and this was before all that, and she ended up quitting drinking and everything. You know, she didn't do it for very long, a few years. But then she was on all these medicines, and they just kept getting more and more medicines. And then all of a sudden, when the doctor prescribed the fucking pain pills, and more pain pills, and then when it switched to morphine, it was like, I think the oxycodone, and that was like the... Oh, the soma, somas. I think that's what they call them. So many different pain pills that I can't remember. But what ended up happening is it just stayed on the morphine. And the doses was getting higher. She was taking 60 milligrams, I believe, twice a day. And then 30 milligrams, you could take up to four a day because ones are short acting and ones long acting. So it was either the six, I, I think they did, did 60 twice a day and the 30s for a day. It got that high. I, Unless I'm mistaken, it could have been the one of the 60s, but I don't think so because I think it was two of the 60s. So um, then her boyfriend started taking them also, and he uh, is on, um, what's it, Suboxone? What's the one where they... I don't even know if it's that or not, because there's two, right? And I can't remember which one it was, but he got, as they were together, hooked on heroin for a while and pain pills and everything else. And he got where he went to the hospital because he almost died, and that made her worse, too. And she got so loving into this boyfriend that just it was crazy. But so... He would then take her pills and then she wouldn't have enough for herself and then I don't know it just was a big disaster and so uh, the final result was overdose um, she had been on him for a long long time and so I had my boyfriend at the same time for five fucking years and boy, they can become real big prick people. They can become dicks and rude and say shit and fucking hurt you. Meaning, you know, mentally. And when you're the one who has to sit there and be strong through all this and still take care of your kid and do everything else, you know, that's real hard. And then wondering, like, you know, like now, I get fucking depressed, and who the fuck's there for me? It's like they fucking my mom died, and I don't know. My boyfriend just seems to not fucking have any sympathy for women because he says he does, but it just I don't know. I need I need people to talk to, and some men just aren't good at talking to women anyway. So I'm not trying to be rude, but they're not. Some men just don't have any fucking emotions at all, except the anger, like my dad and everything, and my brother. So, whatever, I'm making this video because I fucking want to, and I'm 
not going to be afraid anymore to fucking say what I want to. So, so I was wondering why the heck my mom died and a thing came to the door and tells me I have to identify a body because she was married to the guy and they wouldn't let me see her, which is fucking bullshit. So they hand me this picture and it's all fucking black and white and it's stupid as fucking hell. Oh, goodness gracious. Didn't look like her at all. Looked like my... Worse than my grandma. Like, meaning, like, white hair and everything. It just was fucked. So, that's bullshit. They're asking me, well, why do you want to see her? I'm like, well, why, why not? You know, it's stupid. And then I asked them, can I take this picture home? They're like, well, no, why do you want to do that? <laughs> I'm like, you know what? You people are just fucked. Whatever I want to do, why can't I just fucking do it? Stupid. Maybe people think I'm nuts, but I don't feel nuts. So I never had to get in the money for 60 bucks or whatever to get the damn report. I want the report, but... I wanted to see actually how much she had in her and everything, but they listed it as accidental, and I'm thinking probably because, you know, it wasn't that much over, but I don't know. I really believe that she just quit breathing. That's what happened. She passed in the chair and didn't have much furniture or anything, but she had a computer chair that she just threw in the corner and sat there and read her books and, well, you know, or went on her laptop or something like that, you know what I'm saying. And uh, I guess she was found there. And she had been passed away for a while because I guess that it was supposedly she was, you know, looking like a different color or like, I don't know, purpley, reddish, whatever. I don't even know, that's what I was told, it's just bullshit. So, how oh, it's just fucked. So, every, the family's been fucked ever since that, but it was fucked way before that, way long ago. Ever since the divorce in 1996. And what do you know, I was pregnant at the time my mom and dad got divorced. So, see, it just hasn't been a happy life for me at all. I couldn't celebrate my pregnancy. My baby shower sucked. It's like fucking five people there. It's just stupid. You know, so when you see things online, when everything looks real big baby showers and real big weddings and just whatever, I don't even, I just, I, I don't care about any of that, but I wish I had more than what I did. She was still here. She was my only damn good friend. Not saying that you guys aren't, but she was a real person, in person friend. And a mom. Who would give the clothes off her back? Which she didn't even have nothing herself. But I really didn't take anything from her. So it hurts my feelings when people say that I didn't do shit for my mom because that's a complete lie. I'm the only one who did anything for her. So as the cruel Emmer effort sits there with all her stuff she had, which was just Jewy stuff and art stuff, and I hope he looks at all the scrapbooks she made 
with my son's pictures in it and I hope he chokes on them because they're supposed to be mine. And when I knew that he wasn't planning on giving me anything, he gave me a couple rings that weren't even real. They were um, a little peace ring. And just I'll show you one day. They're all way just, they're not gold. Nothing. I went pawned her jewelry because I was the next of kin. Ended up getting $328. I couldn't afford to keep it because I was losing my house. But I did keep two of them. So the ring that my dad gave my mom when they got married and a bracelet. So then I totally fucked myself, I guess, because I went and did that. So I totally don't get nothing of hers. But you do what you have to do. <coughs> because when you're dealing with people who are on drugs, and he still is, how it ends up. people are on pain pills and Xanax and things like that, it really could lead to more and more drugs. And it really can lead to death and that's what happened to my mom. She died of an overdose, accidental. And it's sad. Because she was 60. And I know a lot of you out there have lost your mother is younger than that, and I couldn't imagine. Six years old was hard enough. So be careful, please. I don't want to see it happen to you. see it happen to anyone. So, I'm only going to be depressed for a couple more days because it's, I think it's that damn menopause damn shit because things are starting to change around for a whole bunch of stuff and they told me perimenopause way back when I was 38 so now I'm 47. I wish the shit would just end. That's enough to make me mental. It's like something changes and it gets me real irritated badly. I mean, more than it ever has in my whole life. So when I started getting 38, things just started getting really shitty. And it started messing with my mental state inside. It's not like it came out, but, you know, it just makes me feel like a piece of junk. And I don't want to be in any of these fucking pills. So that's why I drink beers once in a while. And I'm almost ready to grab one. 
I don't get too messed up though. I have to stay up all night and take care of the kid and everything. So if anything, I'll have one an hour and sometimes less than that. And or I'll quit for a while and then have more later, just something like that. But at least I know when I drink the alcohol what it's gonna fucking do to me. I've tried lots of pills before, Zoloft, uh, some Balta, fucking, um, well, Butrin, fucking Clonopin. Uh, they think they gave me Trazodone. I think I took one and that was it. It just screwed me up for like a whole day. And I did try one of somebody's pain pills once because I was having some really bad tooth problems. And it reminds me of my friend on here. But um, oh my God, that screwed me up for like eight to ten hours straight and it made me so sick. So pain pill, they just make me sick. And the CBD gummies make me sick in my head too. I don't even understand. I tried a few of those. Weed gets me too messed up. I'm either laughing my fucking ass off for hours and can't concentrate or what. So beer just keeps me level calm. And that's, that's good. I mean, it might sound fucking crazy. And yes, I do have addictions. I have addictions too. So I understand when people are addicted to things. We could lead to death. Just like my cigarettes could lead me to death. The beer could lead me to death. I... <sighs> what a struggle. I feel so bad. For people. That's another thing too. I gotta be careful how much I watch or what I listen to too much because it gets me depressed. Um, because I care a lot and I want to help people. And um, I know how sad people could be and feel lonely and depressed and um, it hits home real bad and I run out of energy though because I don't get enough sleep and shit yep and I'm trying to drink water every damn day believe me I fill up these water bottles and even though I know people are going to say oh you know that's not healthy to refill them but I'm not keeping the water in there and I'm not um, letting it sit in the sun like leaving it in the car or anything. We don't even have a car. Now the fucking dryer's been broke forever. We got the parts and just things. It just goes fucking on and on. And adding all the shit that's going on in the world is just very depressing. But on a good note, uh, which isn't going to be much at all compared to this 22 minute video, but on a good note, every time uh, the wind blows, I, I'll see certain leaves that have this weird little wave to them and one leaf on a whole tree just won't quit doing it and that's my mom so she'll be waving to me again soon so yep there you go she just beeped at me so I love all you guys thanks for listening this was a uh I love you to my mom and but she's in a better place now because she struggled with a whole bunch of shit and that makes me happy that she's in a peaceful place you know doesn't have to worry and have all these money problems like constant because social security doesn't pay jack shit but that's about it thanks for listening and Hopefully, in about two hours, when I have one or two beers, you'll see a different me. You'll see a more happier me, and that might sound crazy, but it's true. So, thank you. Um, I have a good, uh, I don't even know if it's Monday or Tuesday now. I think it's Tuesday. See? Lost track. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. Overnight. Okay, bye-bye.